my gosh! Oh! There you go! Good morning, Dark Sizzle Nation. Dark Sizzle's fishing already. Look at her. She already lost the lure to a bird. Why don't you tell, us what, tell them what we're doing down here, Star Sizzle? Yeah, we're <laughs> down here in Broward County, Florida, which is, I don't know, about, about approximately an hour drive south of where we live. And we are on the C14 Canal, which is like a hot spot for not only bass fishing, but also for snakehead fishing. So we are freshwater, in the freshwater today. And I've got a little topwater frog that I'm throwing. And hopefully I can land one. I've gone snakehead fishing a few times, but have been unsuccessful. So the goal today is to get one and then do a catch, clean, cook snakehead. <laughs> That's the goal. We checked the fish angler app, which, uh, you know, not only logs your catches, but has all kinds of other information on there, like weather. And, you know, it just can be real windy and kind of wavy offshore. And yeah. the bite hasn't been that good. So we decided to try something different and uh, do the snakehead fishing. They're supposed to be super aggressive and great catches, great fight. And we're just lucky to be down here. Yes and able to follow our dreams in all different ways. Set, point and set. Come on, snake head. Boom! <laughs> I did it! Get away, get away, get away, get away, get away from the camera. So we don't spook the rest of the snake heads over here. That, it must be the smallest snakehead someone has ever caught. Legit, legitimately. That's like the smallest I've ever seen in pictures or anything. Can we just get out to the middle so we don't scare the rest? There's a lot of fish making over there. They are an invasive species in this area. Check them out, looks pretty cool. He freaking choked that frog. They are very, very aggressive and they are taking over our fish populations in this area, that's for sure. But I'm so happy I caught my first snakehead. Pretty cool, but then Less than an hour of fishing, had quite a few blow ups this morning, and finally connected on one. Sizzle, you so, set that hook like a champ. Dude, I, that is insane. And the hook's not connected to the nose right here, so you can't like grab the nose and pull it out. It's like buried. All right, Sizzle, I need a little one bigger than that to eat for dinner. That won't fill up my, that won't fill up Papa's belly. Tricky fishing. Oh, baby! What did I get? I got a snakehead! Yes! Yes, dude! Get in the boat! Yeah! That's a snakehead! Let's get out there so we don't spook the rest of the fish. All right. So, this is like really fun ambush fishing, especially like this with the morning like this. But we're like right on the edges of the canal here. And now I'm finally getting the trick to like let these fish eat, actually eat these. Um, eat these frogs before you set the hook. I missed a couple earlier this morning, but that's a stud snakehead right there. <gasps> just spit it. All right, so just casting it, like trying to get it on shore, this frog, and then working it along the bank. And with us drifting right back into the canal, to the edge, we're spooking all the fish. And my shadow is super high, you know, very long this morning because of the sun and the angle. So anything 50 feet in front of me is getting spooked. So you just gotta be like really quiet, just work the bank and try to get your lure up on the bank and then reel it through the water and just do a steady retrieve pretty fast. But we get another snakehead, what? All right, I'm gonna try to hold him. Not having very much success this morning, but look at all those dots on him. I mean, he legit looks like a snake. Even the top of his head, if you just look at the top of his head real quick, the way his eyes are shaped and everything, he looks like a snake. And then that orange dot right on the tail, which is the standard uh, look of an actual snakehead down here in South Florida. And they are invasive. So, woo, almost lost that one again. But I also wanted to mention to you guys, before I forget, my fish hook and, fish hook and anchor bracelets that I'm wearing here. I sell them for the holidays for kids and adults, unisex fishing hook bracelets. They're your lucky fishing hook bracelets, at least for me. So if you want to get them and rep your own, I hand tie every single one, including these sterling silver necklaces that I make, the anchor and the shark and a bunch of other ones on my, my website. So check that out in the description below. Same spot. Oh! 
Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, baby! Just like that, we got another. <laughs> you anchored, right? Okay. All right, so third snakehead in the boat. We got a little rain shower going on right now, filming in the rain. This guy's a little small again. All right, let's get another. Another owl. Hi. That's crazy. Oh, oh. Oh, nice fish. Stay on, stay on. Oh, that was sick. That was sick. That was sick. Heck yes. Oh my gosh, dude. So sick fishing. Woo! Bullseye snakehead in the boat. Biggest of the day. That is really exciting um, chasing these fish. <laughs> that was really cool, even with no sun. Now that we got no sun and we got the cover, it's excellent coverage for us because these fish are smart and they hang out on the shoreline right here in the foliage and the thick vegetation and they're just waiting for prey. They're, they're waiting for toads and lizards to fall into the water and small little things like this. Biggest one, choke that thing. And you gotta literally let them eat it. So after missing a couple this morning, same thing, it just learned, you know, as soon as he eats it, I saw him come up behind it. He followed it for like four or five feet and before he finally hit it. And then I just like lower the rod tip, let him eat it and then set as hard as you can. And my look, my dad's lucky rod today. So thank you, dad. All right, now we gotta get Brian one. It's not fair now. Nice. Oh, I lost him. Nope, I got him. He was coming with me. Nope. Maybe it might be a bass. I don't even know. No, it's a snake. A little one. Slaying the snakes today. Oh, my camera. Look at it. What are you doing? <laughs> It's a snakehead. Slow down. Got him. Oh, I'm going to lose him in the weeds. I don't know if he's there. He's there. He's there. Got it done. There's a fish under there, I promise. <laughs> ah, look at that frog. That's insane. These things are so aggressive. It's not even funny. <laughs> oh. There you go. Yeah. Got something. He's in the, oh no, he's in the weeds. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for you, Brian. He's the off Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, nice. Captain, crazy <laughs> Captain Craig with the assist. Yes, <laughs> high five. Yeah. That's a nice right. one. That's nice. a nice one. Is it nice? That's a nice one. So we've, we picked, if you guys don't remember, remember Captain Crazy Craig. Hi everybody. We used to go fishing all the time and uh, so we picked him up on the way, he lives right here. That's yeah. a nice one. Yeah. yeah. That's a nice one. You're gonna wanna wear a glove. Going in the cooler. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh yeah. I nice. almost didn't have the thing on. That's so a nice fun. one. That's oh a... man, it was fun. Woo. Come on, Jeez, crazy Craig. That was crazy. <laughs> That's another nice one. Oh, oh my oh, gosh. Here come you little <laughs> heads. Look at that one wanted to get back in the water. <laughs> we do need Look the extra third pretty. person to help. He is. This is beautiful. Craig's honey hole snakehead canal where he lives. It's our backyard. We literally have to just come back here like every day. It's a good place to go when it's rough offshore and you're kind of bored and want to do a little freshwater fishing and catch some prehistoric monsters. Yeah. They had your eyes open. Keep 
it tight, trying not to lose them. I've only got 10 pound braid. Nice one. Yes! <laughs> That's the biggest one. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That was so sick. Biggest fish of the day in broad daylight. Threw it over there by one of those culvert pipes or uh, sprinkler pipes, and he just crushed it. And I thought I was gonna lose him in the weeds, but I could feel like I felt he was a bigger fish, and he is. He's got that broad head on him. Definitely a breeder right there, and uh, just all lit up. We have a meal tonight. We've got plenty in the grizzly cooler now. So it's time to go home and clean these bad boys and cook these bad boys. Straight slant. We are back at the house, really long day at the water. And as you can see, we are waiting for the rain to pass today and it's dark now. So I'm trying to get this done as night is falling and hopefully you guys can see me fillet these fish. Well, I'm gonna fillet one for you. I'm gonna pick the biggest snakehead out of my grizzly cooler. 60 quart grizzly cooler, keeping them iced down. Here's the big boy I caught last. Nice fish. Let's get him in the light so you can actually see him. They are super, super slimy. Let me just wipe my hands real quick and I'm gonna fillet them. Okay, to start, I'm gonna be using my go-to knife, which is my seven inch Lawaya saltwater coated filet knife from Smith's Consumer Products. Don't forget about my coupon code, Darsizzle15, 15% off everything on their website, smithsproducts.com. Here we go. So what a really sharp knife, especially with these bad boys. They have scales all the way down, including on the top of their head. So what you wanna do is, actually, you hear that? I don't know if you can hear that but it's a hard, hard head. It's probably harder than concrete. So you wanna make a cut right behind the pec fin here, then just angle it up towards their head, like so. Turn that knife right around, and then just keep it underneath the scales so you're not dulling your knife too quickly, and you just wanna run it right along that backbone. That sharp knife is key here. And these Smith knives get it done. So all the way down to the tail. And I'm gonna pop it through just like any other fish I would do. And I have him on his side, even though he's oddly shaped and he has a really big broad head, they sit kind of weird, but you're just gonna have to make the most of it. So I'm really curious to see what this meat looks like. I heard it's delicious. Probably a lot of you guys are gonna freak out, but I'm just so excited to see what it looks like and how it's gonna taste, of course. So nice long strokes, just like I'm doing. Just gonna slap that meat right off. Oh my gosh, it looks amazing crazy so just nice long strokes wow look at that meat that's the first snake i've I, snake head i have ever filleted and the crazy thing about this too is that recently there was an article in the news and all over social media about these snake heads and them recently being caught in the state of georgia now this is a completely different fish this is not the snake head that you think that is being caught in georgia this is the bullseye snakehead that is really only found down here in South Florida as an invasive species. And they are being now found since 2000, since down in the, they originated down in the Coral Springs, Pompano Beach area, and they basically were released in the C-14 Canal, and they are thriving. And ever since then, they've been caught in the Miami Canals, freshwater only, by the way, Miami Canals all the way down, all the way up to West Palm Beach. I've even heard of reports up there, which is pretty wild. So they definitely are thriving and they love it down here. But I mean, look at that meat. It looks freaking amazing. It looks like a crappie or a snapper, your standard grouper. It just, it even feels amazing. It's gonna be so awesome to eat. I can't wait. It's probably gonna be Brian's new favorite, favorite freshwater fish to eat, watch. All right, so here we go. Same knife, we're just gonna skin it right off. And once again, you want that really sharp knife, especially with this fish, because they're so tough to fillet. And it's coming right off. That meat looks so good. Wow. All right, here we go. Look at that. Just absolutely gorgeous meat. And this one was the biggest one, so it's a really nice thick piece of, thick piece of meat. And there you go, there's the skin all done. And of course, just like any other fish, he does have a little bit of pin bones that I feel right here. So I'm just gonna knock those out real quick. But other than that, there seems to be no bones anywhere else, which is pretty cool. Can't wait to go back and catch some more for you guys. But yeah, so this is the bullseye snakehead and this is not the Northern snakehead that they talked about in Georgia and all over the news lately. There we go, just knock that out. Those are some of the scales. You can see those giant scales, they're just huge. And they're covering his whole head too. 
So just a really aggressive, mean fish. We're gonna finish up the other side of this bad boy and the rest in the cooler. I'm gonna meet you guys in the house for the cooking portion of this video with Chef Pudding. Nice job filleting those snakeheads, those bullseye snakehead dust sizzle. And welcome to another edition of Cooking with Pudding. I wanna go over a couple things first, guys. We got a great, delicious recipe. We've already made a delicious pineapple salsa. Come on in, our sizzles are standing on by the side. We wanna see how pretty you are. Look at her hair down. She's getting a haircut tomorrow. No. Wednesday. Later on this week. <laughs> Later this week. I'm not getting a haircut, but I'm just getting trim. a touch up. Just a trim. You're getting this on Tuesday, the day after you I see this. I washed my hair, so it looks good. It's about time. It's usually All such right. a rapidness <laughs> from fishing. All right, so I made, we made a delicious salsa based with and pineapple, and it was just a couple of ingredients, pineapple, and what's that spice from the garden? Cilantro. Cilantro. And some delicious coconut uh, ah. milk, not coconut milk, coconut cream. Yes. Cream of coconut. Cream of coconut. It was delicious and sweet. We never had, I ate it by I itself never, out of the bowl. Delicious. Never bought that in my life, and it's amazing. Right. Way too much sugar for me. And we got another thing going on. Part of that recipe is cut, cutting up some hot peppers, and Darcy doesn't like hot peppers, so I kind of put them to the side, and got them on my hands, and then I picked my nose a little bit. And now, like, my eyes and my nose is, like, running. So if, if, if you see anything weird, that's what it is. I always warn him about not picking his face <laughs> after handling peppers, but he doesn't seem to learn his lesson. No, I didn't learn my Never. lesson. My nose is <gasps> burning. So fancy. Yes, I'm, and we have a couple uh, mailbox items I want to show. We've been totally delinquent uh, in opening our mail. Okay, this is from Alden, a beautiful wood bowl. He saw us making that sushi, and he said, you need a wood or a bamboo bowl. Yes. It's got bamboo in the bottom. Yes. Thank you very much, Alden. We're going to use it next time we catch a wahoo. Awesome. And also, James McCarty sent us some cool little uh, pocket knives and a nice note. Thank you so much. He's a veteran. He says it's our sizzle. I, I, I read in the ready. I got oh, I see the knife. Oh, the knife. Here you go. Oh, my gosh. So uh, he cool. is a veteran and has been has a little bit of problems, but he's gonna, he's been inspired to get back into fishing. So we're so happy for that. Uh, happy to inspire somebody to do some fishing. And thank you for your service. And we really appreciate the gift and this nice letter. I read the whole thing. Yeah, How cool. cool that is. So cool, James. Thanks for sharing. You hooked us up. All right, so now let's get to this fish. First, again, I told you we got the salsa already made. Now we're gonna blacken it, and Darcy got a bunch of spices here. I'm gonna mix together. Darcy, tell me what they are as I put them in. What is uh, this? That is uh, garlic. We got some garlic. Garlic salt. We gotta have a lot of garlic. Garlic salt. What's this? That is kosher salt. Kosher salt. What's so fancy around here? It was just Yom Kippur, so I guess that's good. That is oregano. Oregano, gotta have oregano. Boom. Oregano and basil, sorry. And what's this? That's thyme. Thyme. That is a black pepper. Black pepper. Looks fine ground. Paprika. Paprika. Cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper. And that's it. Now we're going to mix this up a little bit and we're going to make like a... Uh... So this is like a traditional snakehead recipe, more particularly for the northern snakehead, but of course it goes great with any snakehead, of course. So that is a blackened seasoning. It's a blackened seasoning and then we're going to cook it up in the skillet and then we're going to put the uh, salsa on it. That's it. You guys can see that? Looks pretty good. All right, now I've already got the fish here. Can you see that, guys? Let me move it into the camera for you. There you go. Here we go. Look, good. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cut a nice layer of this on here. Really pat it in. You dried it, right? Oh yeah, it's dry. You gotta dry the fish so it sticks better. Yeah. Next, we're gonna cook it. All right. I already had this pan has been preheating. I'm gonna put a little oil in here. Let that heat up. Pan's already boiling hot. All right, here we go. We're gonna put the spice side down. Sounds good. Now, I always tell you guys, I'm real good at cooking this fish, and that's because I keep track of it, and I check it. You can see when the white starts to come around the edges, and you can also, again, like I always say, you can poke your fork in it. And this is a fairly thin fish, at least these smaller fish we're cooking right now. And again, 10 minutes per inch for a fish. And these are gonna be done in just a couple minutes. I like to set the timer just so I have an idea. All right, so my timer went off and you guys can see that there's some white around the edges, particularly the thinner ones. And they're almost actually done. So I got the fat ones in the middle and the skinny ones down the outside. I'm gonna start flipping the skinny ones first. All right, I... <coughs> oh, excuse me. I got some peppers up my nose, as I said. All right, so I'm gonna poke these little ones I can already see. When I poke my fork, they go all the way through and they're good. 
So these are going to start taking off right away. All right, those look done. Let's put that salsa on there and get to eating. I'm going to put some of that right on there. Look, oh boy, look at that, guys. That's delicious. We made some broccoli. I'm going to put it on there, and we'll see you at the table. All right, Tarsisa, let's get to eating and it's drinking. It's time for the part of the video you guys have been waiting for. To try the snake head for the first time ever. Dive in. I've been waiting for this part to have my beer. You gotta do it too. He always says to do me first, like it's both of us. But the ladies first. The table's filming, not you. <laughs> Dive in. <laughs> I mean, you put the salsa on almost anything, it's gonna taste good. Mm hmm. But. Well, I'm gonna taste it without the salsa too. That's a good idea. I was gonna just cook it in butter maybe. I just saw the fish is white, it's medium firm, it's flaky. Super good. I'm not just saying that. I'm telling you the truth around here. <coughs> I just choked on a little bit of fish. When we tell you the truth around here, especially if it's not going to be good, we'll tell you. But this is out of this world. It's very similar to crappie, right? Better. I think it's a little firmer. It's actually, that's not medium firm, it's better. Medium firm, firm. Like north, northeast. What? It's fairly firm, the meat. North, not bad, not in a bad way. They get it. Well, it's similar to like grouper and snapper too. It's it's really, it's really good. The good. texture is delicious. And it, and Brian's right. The blackened seasoning is a little too spicy for me, but I mean, I'm dealing with it. It's no big deal. She doesn't like spicy. I like spicy. Mmm. That salsa on the top is a must. It's it is delicious. Bomb. Perfect mixture. So I think you could probably use this recipe for almost any fish. Mm -hmm. We used it for the snakehead. Again, that's a bullseye snakehead, not the northern snakehead everyone's tripping on uh, yes. with the recent news stories, okay? These have been down here 20 years, like Darcy said, and right. uh, they're really taking over that kind of area, but they're not spreading around like nuts. Yeah, and just so you know, the FWC, the Florida Wildlife Commission, does not say on their website to actively kill these fish. A lot of people honestly release these fish back into the waterway. You're just not allowed to transport them to a new like canal or a place alive. They're supposed to be released back into the same water that you caught them in. We killed them but all. We killed them all. Yeah. Um, but go ahead and comment your below your thoughts on the invasive species and what you would do because the FWC doesn't recommend to kill them. So what would you do? Would you release them all or would you kill them all? So hopefully y'all are not mad at us because we did kill this invasive exotic species. <laughs> <laughs> but hope you guys enjoyed this catch clean cook. I'm about to devour the rest of this because we are starving and we're going fishing tomorrow. So. Thank you all so much for watching. Check all the links down below. Everything that you're ever going to need is there. And until our next adventure. Have a land shark and. Yes, taste the land shark, <laughs> follow your dream, and, and keep, keep on, on catching. catching.